Well, I think what we want to concentrate on in this talk is, is basically soil regeneration. Because my goal is to farm forever. I'm not interested in a short-term plan. I'm interested in something that allows us to, to maintain a high quality of food uh, for forever, for generations to come. And I think in order to do that, we have to take a look at the past and see where, where our weak points were. Certainly, uh, certainly carbon levels are probably one of the more critical factors. And so we've concentrated initially on bringing soil health principles to stabilize the soil and then bring the carbon levels higher. And then we would see some uh, subsequent impacts from that, like increases in soil biology and increases in resiliency. And, and it's really a lot of little things that we bring together that start to make these changes and these improvements. And so it's been uh, kind of a road of information and education. And uh, certainly ones of um, working one-on-one -on -one, uh, off the back of an end gate on a pickup at the edge of the field. And I think uh, the boots on the ground is, to me, what makes the change one field at a time. The first principle would be armor or putting residue, either a green plant or dead litter residue on the soil surface. And so that, to me, stabilizes the soil surface. Takes care of a lot of our uh, rain impacts, takes care of a lot of the evaporation issues, uh, temperature, uh, all of these things start to moderate. So the first thing I like to do is, is uh, armor up a field, put residue or a green plant on it, something that covers it. Second one is we uh, started to reduce our disturbance. And so we started to minimize disturbance. And it initially started fairly straightforward. Um, if you were tilling that field three times a year, how do you get to two? If it was two, how'd you get to one? And you know, eventually we took all the disturbance out. And so you, you start moving down that road, uh, putting the car armor on and then taking the disturbance out. The third principle was we increased our diversity. And so uh, there's four major crop types, cool season grass, warm season grass, uh, cool season broadleaf, warm season broadleaves, and we try to bring all of those crop types in. And as we increase diversity on the soil surface, our biology increased. And so these two go together and they're direct reflections of each other. Uh, the next principle that we put together was a continual live plant. And that's when we brought in the cover crops. And so as a uh, cash crop would be harvested, uh, we'd start to uh, b basically chase the combine out of the field with the tractor and drill and put in a new seeding. And the cover crop was an opportunity to give us what we didn't have. And so if we were missing one of the major crop types, we could pick that up in the cover crop. And then also with the cover crops, uh, we brought in multi-species cover crops, and that allowed us to adjust the CN ratios. And so the carbon-nitrogen ratio became a real critical factor because now we could do some adjustment of it. Whereas if you have a monoculture, uh, the CN ratio of the plant is what it is. But in, you bring in mul multiple species of plants, you can make it high, mid, low. You can, you can do these type adjustments, which gave, gave us a tool we never had before. Yeah, and the fifth principle for us was livestock integration. And plants, animals, and soils evolved together geologically. And it only made sense to bring the animal aspect back into it. And that helped us um, from uh, a multitude of impacts. Uh, for instance, um, uh, converting high carbon materials to low carbon materials with the livestock so we could manage some of our residues. Also, we, uh, did, uh, we would graze approximately half the material of a cover crop. We'd always leave the other half on the soil surface, so it's always a balance. And so we brought the livestock in. I like their biology. And so the, uh, the outside of a ruminant is covered with aerobic biology and the inside of the ruminant is anaerobic biology and they are a wonderful creature to help us regenerate soils. And so those were the five principles that we applied and uh, we just moved down the field with those. And so myself as a conservation planner, I would meet with individual farms uh, in the field and we would start to address the principles on a field. We would start with a field. And if we did it right on that field, the next one is much easier. And the other thing that was very unique is these principles, how you address them is unique to every farm. Every farm is different. Uh, the principles are universal, but every farm is unique uh, to how you do this. You know, if we look back, uh, at least within the U.S., um, our trend has been taking livestock off the land. And 
and either no livestock or livestock in confinement in lieu of on the land. And so now that we're turning this around, or at least our emphasis is to return livestock to the land, then you look at, you start getting into the management of it. And so uh, when we concentrate livestock or bring in larger numbers, then we limit our time. So our amount of time that we're on a field is quite short. And so yeah, that's, that's one of the big advantages of bringing in a larger number of head at one time. Short period of time and they're moving to the next paddock. And so that limits the amount of uh, impact on the, on the land. But we can manage that impact with time. And if we want a little, a little longer time, we can, we can watch that and, and leave a little bit more time. Uh, before we come in and bring livestock in for grazing, I like to cut off uh, some of the more dominant plants and I balance them on my hand because I'm only gonna take half by weight. And so now I have my eye. And then when we bring the livestock in, I already have a pretty good idea where that 50% level is, because we're only gonna take half by weight. The other half has to return to the soil surface. And so the big advantage of bringing in the, um, the more of a mob impact is you get a better trample impact and more uniform across the field. And so those, um, those are a lot of the aspects of it. And now, now um, people that have not had uh, livestock on the land for quite some time, this is a new learning curve. And, and those that are willing to step into it. People that have always had and maintained the livestock, it's a much quicker, quicker response. Because when you bring the livestock in, you have to maintain their body condition also. And so their, their diet, their ration becomes very critical because now you're watching the aspects of the soil, livestock and the plants, and then the livestock, so you're monitoring all of them. And, and um, I think for uh, there, a little bit more of a learning curve for those that um, haven't had livestock in quite some time, but yet very doable and benefits are there. I think that also if you look at the whole breakdown, you know, how we break down methane and you look at the whole aspects of water trans transpiring off of green plants, et cetera, uh, I think this is, puts them back into their element. And I think that's a little different impact than when you have them in confinement. And so, so uh, I, I really like to see them uh, being returned on the land. I, I feel there's a lot of positive impacts for us, especially also from the viewpoint of animal waste. We don't concentrate it. We don't have those particular water quality issues as well. Well, the f a future food system is uh, probably going to always be unique to the resources that are available in a given community. But uh, certainly, I think there's more aspects of uh, locally grown and uh, locally produced and locally transported. And I, I think all of these things start to uh, bring us uh, a fresher food and bring us one that um, has maybe uh, less associated costs in transport and, and shelf life and these type things. And I think we're gonna probably continue to move down these areas. Um, I, I'm accustomed to working in a large scale egg production area. And so there isn't as much value added uh, initially. Uh, it's something we may see also, uh, but in other parts of the U.S. I, I definitely have seen more value added uh, locally, and I think that's another big issue. And so um, myself, I, I would prefer uh, to buy something locally. My wife and I have purchased uh, grass-finished beef locally uh, in the Bismarck area for many years, and I think those are just all things that you can do to build your family a, a safe a safe uh, diet.